February 16, 2002. 1000 meter short track speed skating final. One of the most epic race finals in Olympic history is about to unfold. In order to understand better what is about to happen, let's go back a bit. Australia took part in its first Winter Olympics in 1936 in Garmisch-Partenkirchen. On this occasion, Kenneth Kennedy finished 29th in the 500 speed skating event. Even though Australia is a major nation in the Summer Olympics, by ranking 3rd in Melbourne in 1956 and 5th in Rome in 1960, winter sports are not developed there for obvious geographical reasons. Despite this, the country has been represented in all Winter Olympics since 1952 with honourable performances. Colin Coates notably ranked 6th in the 10,000 meter speed skating event in 1976. Australia is still awaiting its first Winter Olympic medal at the beginning of the 1990s, however. Hope will come from a new sport. Short track is a speed skating discipline where falls are more frequent than in the traditional version of the sport, and in which the Australian team won gold at the 1991 World Championships. Short track makes its first Olympic appearance in 1992 with four disciplines, including the 5000 meter relay, which the Australians won the previous year. After managing the fastest second time in qualifying, the reigning world champions fell in the semi-finals and were subsequently eliminated. Two years later, in Nienhammer, the Australian team is rewarded with the third place on the same relay. Stephen Bradbury, Kieran Hansen, Andrew Murtha and Richard Nizelski became Australia's first Winter Game medalists. Three of the four bronze medalists returned in 1998, but the team was eliminated in the semi-finals. The youngest of the four relay runners, Stephen Bradbury, had medal chances for the individual events, but fell in the 500 and 1000 meter races as he had four years earlier. Worse, he suffered a violent fall in training in 2000 and broke his neck. As the doctors told him that he would never be back on the ice, Bradbury was determined to participate in his fourth Olympic Games. He finally managed to qualify for the 1000 meter race. The Australian team would not participate in the relay. During the quarterfinals, Bradbury finds himself in the same heat as Apollo Anton Ono from the US, a favourite for the final win, and Marc Gagnon from Canada, the reigning world champion. Bradbury finishes third and is logically eliminated from the games. Marc Gagnon is disqualified for having pushed Naoya Tamura from Japan in the last corner. The emotional roller coaster of Salt Lake City has just begun. Bradbury qualifies for the semi finals but is seen as the weakest competitor. The strategy set up by his trainer Anzong is simple stay back and hope for mayhem at the front of the race. This strategy does not seem to be able to pay off because the semi final takes place with five competitors instead of four with only two qualifying places. It was without counting on the magic of sport. Stephen Bradbury qualifies after two of his opponent fall in the last corner. The final unfolds as expected. Four competitors are fighting for the podium, while Bradbury is far behind. Approaching the last corner, Li Chun touches Apollo Anton Ono. The end of the race speaks for itself. We would be wrong to see only the tale of a lucky man in Bradbury's story. His Olympic title is undeniably the result of one of the most unlikely coincidences in sports history. However, let us not forget that the development of speed skating in Australia from the 1930s onwards, the golden generation that gave a taste of Olympic greatness to the young Bradbury, followed by a cruel series of falls, the last one threatening his life, are key elements to understand this incredible night of February 16, 2002. As Louis Pasteur said, Fortune favors the prepared minds. Thank you very much for watching this video. See you very soon on Out of Bounds, Legendary Athletes.